All right, today in the garage, we're going to rebuild the head. I'm going to do the entire top end of the engine. Uh, you can see here I've, I've prepped the head out. One of the things that I did in one of my other videos, I talked about uh, porting. Uh, let me show you a quick little video of uh, what the inside of these ports look like. Basically, the idea behind porting is to um, reduce any uh, obstructions that would, that, would in, that would hinder the airflow. Uh, this is not like I'm trying to make it bigger for a bigger valve or whatever. No, it's just cleaning it up so that I can get a good, uh, predictable airflow. And you can see I've got them nice and cleaned out in there. Um, the, uh, the other thing that I did on here to prep this was I looked for places where there were casting imperfections in the... Um, uh, uh, combustion chamber here and you can see right here I ground this one down um, there was another one back over here one of these outside sides here there was uh, there's some 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 issues that I just wanted to take care of now um, in my previous video when I talked about preparing the head I, t I uh, went over how to clean your valves and as I was cleaning these uh, during the evaluation, I figured out that I figured if I can get a good focus. Some of these exhaust valves had been burnt to a point where they were not going to seal anymore. I didn't have a good deal of confidence with them, um, and so uh, we decided just to go ahead and replace all the valves. Um, this is a uh, 74 and a half. Um, in one of my other videos, I talked about. Um, the one model of uh, a cylinder head that has a larger uh, circumference of an intake valve and that's this that's this is that kind of head now this car is a, uh, a 77 but it has this um, this other head on here uh, just so you can have a little bit a little bit better performance a little bit more airflow and um, so these these valves are going to give us that before we put these valves in though because we uh, um, did the porting and we've done a lot of work here. I sanded this, this surface right here. Oh, let me talk about that. <laughs> so in my previous video, I talked about uh, preparing the, the surface to remove all the gasket material and not to use wire brush to make any, any divots or holes or dents in the surface here, but to use a flat, um, a flat bar with some high grit sandpaper on there uh, to clean that off. Uh, one of... Um, uh, one of the contributors in the in the uh, on the site had put a comment um, that he thought that it would have been a good idea before I prepped that to uh, check to make sure that this is straight and true and it's not warped to check it for warpage. Well, actually, I did that and I didn't mention it in that video. Um, when we had the engine block um, uh, honed out uh, to the it's to the new piston sizes. Um, I took the head into the shop and I asked them to uh, to measure that for me, and they did verify that it was in fact straight, straight and true, and there's just no warping on the head. So I I did do that step. It wasn't necessary in my case to do any kind of milling, um, but um, you should certainly check that. Um, the way that they check it, I just want to show you real quick here. I don't really have the proper tools. But here's a straight edge. This is a metal straight edge. And the methodology that they use is they'll take a straight edge, although they have one that is, uh, you know, um, the machine shops have a straight edge that is made specifically for this, and it is uh, measured to, you know, really high tolerances to make sure that it is, in fact, straight. But the methodology that they use is they'll take a straight edge and they'll move it along the surface and um, measure with a, uh, a feeler gauge, something like this. Um, if there's a gap, um, they, can, they can measure that with a feeler gauge. Uh, but the idea here is, you know, you can, you can pretty well see that I don't have any, any warpage on here. The, their straight edge is really long and straight, um, and they, they do it lengthwise. 
So they'll go this way and check it this way and check it all different axes to make sure that it's that it's flat. Um, and so you can you can kind of do a preliminary search on that. Just take if you have a good metal straight edge that you trust the straightness on um, and just run it along and try to find gaps in any of the gasket areas um, and try to find if you have high spots and low spots. And I don't I don't have that in this case. So question qu question answered. <laughs> Mischief managed. All right, so uh, the first thing you need to do when you're rebuilding the head is, uh, or, or rebuilding the top end of the engine, is to take a look at the interface between the top end and the bottom end. And in that case, uh, that starts with the tappets. So when we tore this engine down, uh, again, let me give you a little history. This engine was sitting in a, in a barn for over 20 years um, with a blown head gasket. And uh, when you blow a head gasket, um, the oil and the antifreeze will mix together. And in this case, um, the, the oil from the head was going down into this tappet gallery in here. The backs of these old tappets were filled with antifreeze and oil mixture, and they had some pitting. And uh, some of them had some really, really oddball wear on them, so they, they become very suspect. So let me show you. Here's one of the tappets. You can see there's some wear here where it, uh, it, it rides inside the sleeve. This bottom part here just rides inside the, the, uh, the engine compartment so it doesn't really get a lot of uh, exposure. But the bottom edge is what runs on the cam. And if you can feel these, it, you get some cupping. If, it's, uh, if you have like an, an edge on the, on the top edge, you can almost feel that there's some cupping in there. Now these are free floating, so they'll spin around. There's not going to be any wear pattern on here per se, but they'll spin around on their own. And you'll see wear along this skirt when because it, it, it rides in, inside the shaft um, in there. Uh, so this one really isn't that bad. I probably would not have replaced this one, but this one kind of blew my mind. First of all, you can feel grooves. So there was some kind of dirt or something that had run grooves in the sides of this, this tappet. Um, the top of the tappet, this is the, I should say the bottom, the part that interfaces with the cam, had a chip. Literally had a chip in it. And this right here, I have no idea. This was ground down or something. Um, there was some, some, like... I don't know, grindings or something that, that had chipped this thing. Um, and so this one was very, very suspect. And I was definitely going to replace this one. Well, you replace one, you replace them all, right? The, um, some of these other ones are not that bad. But you can see after you know sitting for 20 years um, in, in, in state, there's a rust inside. I didn't want to have to deal with the rust on an engine component. Here, this was uh, this tappet here was actually rusted into the sleeve that it was uh, in. It was connected in, so you can see there's some places where the rust kind of broke free right there, um, and uh, it's not really that much trouble on the bottom end here. This one here was not so bad. Again, you can see there's some rust marks. I tried to clean them up, but they needed to be replaced. This one has some chattering. I don't know if you can see that. See these, these concentric circles around? Um, so there was uh, some metallic material between, between this and the, uh, and the cam, and it was chattering, and it was creating these concentric circles. So this one needed to go as well. This one, uh, what was the deal with this one? Oh, uh, outside rust on the, on, the, on the outside here, a lot of corrosion. This one here, I don't know if you can see that. There's actually corrosion on the top here. This is rough from where rust had pitted it. Um, most of the other ones were, were not sitting um, on a lobe, but this one was sitting on a lobe and water got between it and the cam. Uh, and so it rusted out. So anyway, um, <clears throat> we're replacing these, uh, these tappets with uh, 
uh, some new tappets I got here from Moss Motors. Here's the, uh, the tappet set. Um, these are not the high performance tappets, but this is not a high performance engine. This is just going to be something I'm going to be driving on the weekends. Um, but these tappets, you can see, these are brand spanking new. Manufactured in India. So take pride, India. I got some of your manufacturing stuff right here. You can see it on the, on the top edge here, how it has a little bit different shape or color. These are hardened. Um, now, when you buy the performance tappets, uh, they're hardened to a specific specification. Um, and I don't know that these are specifically set to any particular hardness or that they're hardness tested, but you can certainly see that they have been cooked in the oven and have been made hard. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put some uh, um, assembly oil on this and we'll drop them into their prospective spots. Stuff is really nice and not really right that side. Okay, doke. All right, those are ready. So, as with anything, cleanliness is the best thing that you need to to, to worry about. You don't want any kind of dust or dirt or uh, metal fragments or uh, any kind of carbon buildup or anything like that to get onto bearing surfaces. Now, these valve, uh, these valve guides in here, you see them. Um, there's some little nicks here and there. That's just from the um, the etching tools when I was doing the porting. Uh, I didn't change any of the geometry or or do any uh, any grinding on these. Um, but um, when I did the porting. Oh my gosh, what a mess it makes. So I gotta tell you, if you decide that you wanna port your head, take everything out of the area, cover it in, in, in and uh, manage the dust control. Specifically, uh, this is a cast iron um, head. Uh, porting that was such an incredible mess. Um, and so anyway, there's a lot, of, a lot of dust that it gets generated, and so there's dust inside these, inside these um, uh, valve guides. Um, so in a pre in a pre previous life, um, I was a Marine Corps marksmanship instructor, and so I know how to handle cleaning out the bore of something that looks like a freaking gun to me. So what I did here is I made these little patches. These are uh, little, I don't know, inch and a half, two inch patches uh, made of uh, just some shop towel. And uh, what I got here you can see this is a bore cleaning rod for a pistol um, and so basically you just take a little uh, WD 
put that on the shop towel and you run it in there and uh, run it back and forth I've already done this one so it's not going to be that bad but um, you can see there's some dirt still coming out of that there's still some dirt on there um, so hold it to your Marine Corps standards <laughs> keep doing that until you, until it comes out clean and uh, just like cleaning the barrel on a or the bore on a rifle or a, a pistol in this case just keep changing the cloth keep going at it until it comes back clean there we go that's looking a whole lot better all right let's move on to the next one here I'm gonna go ahead and put this dirty one back on here just to get it wet we'll run this through a few times and then put a new new cloth on there all right so I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest of these and I'll speed up the video so you can catch me on the other side All right, all clean. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do here is that we got a brand new set of valves. We're going to we're going to uh, we're going to lap those uh, with the uh, with the valve seats. These valve seats are really in very good shape. They don't have any nicks or any kind of uh, burns. The uh, the issue that I had with the uh, with the exhaust valves, I don't know if you can see here. Let me get it into the camera. With the exhaust valves, you can see when I was cleaning it, there were some places, right, where it was pitted. I don't know if it's coming up on the camera very well, but cleaning it wasn't enough, and uh, they were not going to seal. It was quite obvious to me that these were not going to get a good seal regardless of what I did to lap them or anything. Um, so we're going to go with, uh, with the new valves. The, um, the new valves are new, obviously. We can trust that this surface is uh, nice and clean and uh, has no blemishes. It's the right angle that it needs to be. And, um, but in order for that to mate up with, perfectly with these... Um, valve seats you need to lap them and um, before I do that I want to make another real quick little comment um, so uh, if if I was if I was sus suspect that these valve guides had too much play in them then they would be coming out and I would put new ones in but I think that they're good um, I I don't have a method for measuring them but they don't feel floppy and uh, I, they they feel concentric. They they bounce when you put them in. Whoops, that's <laughs> the wrong valve. Um, but anyway, um, there there's no problems with uh, with uh, those valve seats. All right, so we're gonna lap these valves. <clears throat> uh, I'll be using this uh, Permatex valve grinding compound. Uh, the trick with this stuff is that it has uh, four different grits. So when you first start off, it'll feel kind of crunchy. And as you continue to uh, uh, to spin the valves in place, it'll get smoother and smoother as it goes. And the idea there is um, that the the heavier grit um, it, uh, abrasives 
will migrate from the, uh, the valve surface away um, and then you'll be left with just the, uh, the fine grain um, grit and then that will get you down to the, the really smooth can, uh, finish that you need. The, 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 real, the idea here and the, the end game is to make it so that the valve and the valve seat are mated. They match up perfectly and then you get a good seal. Um, so let's get started with this. Um, as, you, as you progress, you see I've got a marker here. Uh, as you progress, once you have a, a, a valve ground, it will match that seat. And so you're going to want to mark on the valve which, which cylinder that it goes on. I've, there's only one exhaust valve and one intake valve per cylinder, so I'll put a one on this one. This is cylinder one because it has the, uh, um, uh, the, the thermostat that goes in the front of the engine. So this is cylinder one right here. Um, okay, so let's get this thing going. All right, so you, you can poke a little hole with the, with the little hoo-ha at the end. And it was loaded. It wanted to come out right now. You can take a little bit of this, and we're going to put it around the edge of the valve. We're going to get a nice even connection. You don't want to put too much. You don't want to put too little. Because it's got to, got to have enough for it to do it's what it's going to do. Put too much and then you got you got abrasives all over inside the, the head. So you make it harder to make it clean up. All right, so uh, I have a couple of different uh, size um, spinning wands here. It goes from really small here, progresses a little bit each time, up to uh, a much larger one here. Um, I'm gonna pick, I'm gonna pick one for this exhaust valve that will work the best. All right. I feel like Tom Hanks making fire on uh, that movie, uh, the Castaway. Wilson. tricky because they have a, a void in the middle. I don't know if I can use a bigger one. Oh, that one. It's going to be too big. Take a look and see what we got here. So, I don't know if you can see there, we have a nice etching around the outside here that will meet up with that valve seal. Clean this up. Don't want any of that material to go down inside there.
Right, nice uniform all the way around, nice concentric circle. All right. Cylinder one. Okay, let's uh, let's get a good close look of um, of what this valve seal looks like, um, and uh, make sure that we have uh, a, a good mating surface all the way around it. No gaps or voids. Looks like we got her done. Okay, so that's not the end of it. Once we get all these uh, uh, lapped once, we're gonna we're gonna assemble the valves and put the put the springs on, and then we're gonna test the cylinders or each of these um, combustion chambers. We're gonna test them for leakage, um, and if we need to go back again, we'll go back again. It's not a big deal. Um, is it something you got to get absolutely right because you don't want to have bad compression. So I'm going to go ahead and um, uh, start working through the rest of these and then I'll speed up the video and we'll, we'll pick it up at the end.
Mm-hmm. And that's me, Alex. Oh. It's a process. It's a process. Those must be freaking towels, that's for sure. How's the wheel look? Very good. I didn't. Did you uh, intend to leave it um, just lightly painted on the back? Yeah, I didn't. A lot of the other ones I didn't like fully painted on the back. Okay. Probably could have put a little bit more another coat, but. Just to keep it from rusting up again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right on the bottom edge. I don't think that these valves are gonna be, are gonna work. It's gonna be a setback. The intake valves are not quite doing what they're supposed to do. Well, now that you've etched to a etched them, can you return them? Well, I think what I need to do is. Um, um, Get a hold of performance dynamics and have them machine these. Mm. It's only eight dollars a piece, but it's you know eight bucks. The the thing is, I'm gonna go ahead and continue with the um, with the intake or with the exhaust valves because they uh, they're going well. It could be that I ordered the wrong parts. I mean. It happens, but um, I can call Moss on Monday. I'm just not going to be able to do that this weekend like I wanted. Fuck. Don't rush it. Don't fuck it up. It's late in the game. If it doesn't look right, make an adjustment, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Just don't like that. Well, we have plenty of other things to work on. Yes, we do. I'm wondering if I should go ahead and record it, that there was an error. Go ahead and record it, and you don't have to use it if you don't want to. How, you know. All right, so I'm not really happy with the way these intake valves are lapping. I don't know if you can see from here. The lapping is only happening a very small section of this valve seat. Um, and it's not in the center. It's uh, all only on the edge. There, it does. It is seating but not completely. And so I think I'm going to I'm going to pass on these intake valves and I'm going to make some phone calls to make sure I've got the right components. I may have the wrong valves 
for this for this particular head. Um, so, but the the uh, exhaust valves, the exhaust valves are are lapping just fine. See how it sits right in the middle, right there. And I've been inspecting the um, the seats, and and they're looking nice and clean. So that that's not going to be a problem. So I'm going to go ahead and um, I'm going to continue, but I'm only going to lap the exhaust valves, and I'm going to do a little bit of look up on the intake valves to see if maybe I have the wrong part number. Uh, so a little delay in the process here. Um, it'll be a good experience for all of us to learn. <laughs> uh, so there we go. And when I get a resolution, I'll share it with y'all. All right. So um, I'm going to go ahead and cut it right here, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, lap these two. All right. So I'm going to show real quick um, what what I'm looking for when I'm, I'm testing these uh, seats to make sure that they're they've been lapped nicely. If you can see, this is the number two cylinder, and I've gone back and forth. Let me get a flashlight here. And uh, you can see all the way around, it's nice, smooth, even, and consistent. No, uh, no nicks or chips or dents. Everything is nice and concentric. When um, you see over here on the third cylinder. see on the bottom half it looks pretty good coming around but when you get to about the 11 o'clock position maybe the 10 o'clock can you see that little shadow right there that little shadow that little aura kind of grayish hue that right there means that uh, the um, there's a there's a divot or a dent, sort of a, uh, uh, the, the lapping material did not get into that area. Um, and so we're gonna, I'm gonna lap it again. It's very subtle, um, but you know, you're talking about catching gas. So um, with, between two pieces of metal that have to match up really nice. So we're gonna lap it again until that little gray mark goes away. So back at it. That's what I'm checking for, just to make sure everything is um, is nice and, and polished up. All right, so um, after some additional research, um, turns out that uh, while I had made the selection of this part number here, this uh, these are the 1.625 <coughs> uh, intake valves for the 72 to 74. This is actually um my head is a uh it's a 2923 which has the uh, uh the larger intake valves and uh um when i tried to lap these i don't know if you can see let me uh put it under the mic the magnifying glass here you can see it didn't it didn't seat in the center Kind of ran off the edge here and it didn't get into the middle so these these valves obviously are not for the the head that i have i don't know if you can see in here the uh, uh, there we go so you can see how it only lapped on the edge it didn't get in the middle um, and these also have a kind of a Thick. The geometry is different. Um, if you compare this to the geometry of the valves from that I had originally, these are the original valves. You can see the the thickness of this seating area is much wider on these. Well, after doing a little bit of research, I found out that there is a uh, another valve type for this particular model of engine, uh, and it's a 0.7 or 1.7 inch uh, flow uh, airflow valve, um, and uh, that's what it appears that I have here. Uh, they're on back order at Moss, but I think I can source them. But you know, I'm looking at these. I might be able to clean these up, 
they don't really have any pitting. The reason why I was replacing the valves is because the exhaust valves on two of the valves were burnt, and there's no way that I could get those to uh, to seal again. So I figured, you know, I'll just replace them all. Um, but if I want to finish this uh, this project, I can either go with these valves and try to clean them up, and then lap them and seat them and see if I can get a good seal. If I can get a seal, I might just go with these. Um, as it is, uh, these valves, these ones that are incorrect, these uh, one inch point six two five valves, these are eight bucks a piece, and these are fourteen dollars a piece. So they're a little more expensive, um, but it appears that they have a better flow pattern. Um, and uh, so we'll see if we can get these connected. Um, I'll list a couple of uh, pages um, in the um, the Moss catalog so you can see the difference. Their description is identical for both of these valves. It says for the same model year uh, for each one. But you can see how they, the geometry on this the cut for that valve is significantly different. Um, so um, learn from me. Before you buy your valves, figure out if you have the 6.2s or the 7 O's and you can measure that very simply with a caliper okay that, that appears to be a measurement right there and if you measure that it says that valve is, oops, <laughs> I'm measuring the skinny one. Here, let me measure the fat one first, because that doesn't fit now. So if I measure the, the seven O's, you get a good, good reading from the calipers. These are just barely touching. Okay, and then if I take the six two fives, passes through with no problem. There is obviously a difference in the width there. So um, measure that width. Measure the width on the outside here and make sure I uh, I was going off of the uh, the part number based on the head description and the model number of the head. Um, but uh, there is a different type of valve that can go on that same head depending on how the seats are cut. Um, so anyway, uh, moving on with this, I just wanted to point out to you that there is a difference, uh, although the part numbers and the description in, in Moss um, are identical, you would never know without measuring it. So take that extra step and measure and make sure that you have the right part before you order them, or you'll be like me, standing here with two valves uh, in front of your desk trying to figure out which one that you should have bought. <laughs> All right, moving on. All right, so I have uh, lapped all the valves. Uh, we are um, not going to use the valves, the, um, the intake valves that I purchased. We're going to use these, which turned out to be um, uh, gas flowed valves. Uh, once I uh, realized what I had, I decided to go ahead and keep these, uh, these valves. They cleaned up really nice, and they, they got a good seal when I lapped them. So uh, what we're going to do right now is... Uh, we're going to do a, a leak test. Uh, so uh, obviously the reason why we lapped them was to make sure that we had a good seal between the valve seats and the valves uh, themselves. And so um, what we're going to do is a, a, a water leak down test. Uh, you can do this outside the engine. It's probably the only way you can do it is outside the engine. Uh, the first trick here is to try to get it level, straight and level. Um, and you can see pretty much achieved that. Um, you just want to be able to get it so that it will hold water. And um, so the um, next thing you're going to do is you're just going to drop the valves in there. Now you make sure you, you line them up. Obviously I matched. Oh, it's not going far enough. i got to get these a little higher up because they're not going all the way down. They're, they're hitting. All right, let me put another piece of wood in there. Um, let me break away and then we'll, we'll get back. All right, so marching on. I... Uh, had to increase the size of the, the thickness that I had this thing suspended um, so that I can get the valves to uh, go all the way through and not touch the counter here. So, all right, 
There you go. Dropping the valves in there. These all have a number one on them. They will go into the number one. The uh, next one right here. It will drop right in there. All right. You don't necessarily need to put the uh, the springs on these. Um, they should be able to um, uh, to seal on their own. Make sure that they're all seated um, and all the numbers are matching up. Everything's golden. Golden. So the next thing we're going to do here is we're just going to put some water right into the um, uh, the combustion chamber, and we're going to make we're going to. Uh, the other thing I want to mention is. Uh, obviously, there's a hole right here, um, and so I put the spark plugs in. They're just finger tight um, so that the water won't reseep out the uh, spark plug hole. So we're just going to fill these up. And if they leak out, then we'll know that we have um, one of the valves in that section. And that cylinder is not sealing correctly. It's a good test to do before you put the head all back together again. All right, everything's set. So we'll come back after a couple hours and we'll check those again and make sure that we don't have any seepage uh, and that uh, everything is uh, copacetic. And then we can start putting the springs on and we'll, we'll pick it up from there. Okay, so after an hour, <clears throat> it came out to inspect and looks like we have a leak, little leakage here. Um, this one here is is uh, standing strong, but number one is, is reducing. And you can see a little bit of wetness uh, coming through right here. So we're going to redo the... Um, um, we got some wetness on the exhaust too. So both of these ports on number one need to be uh, relapped. Number four is doing good. It's uh, holding strong. There's no leakage. Nothing in any of these. And uh, this one right here, we have uh, some wetness in uh, both of the ports. So I think we're going to do one and three over again. Uh, and then we'll come back and test them all over. So. Uh, that's why you test it. Now, if I had put this all back together and had a leak, then I would have had taken it back apart again. So it's just a quick little test to, to get you preliminarily uh, in the ballpark so you know that these are, are going to hold a good seal. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and relap those and we'll do another test. Quick little comment here. Um, as I get the water out of these uh, combustion chambers, I've already uh, wiped it out with a rag, but what I'm doing is... Uh, I'm treating each of these valves to a liberal amount of uh, WD. Um, WD-40 was actually um, designed to displace water in electronics. So um, it'll uh, prevent any kind of flashover rust or anything uh, from developing on these. Because, you know, water has corrosives in it. It's right out of the tap. It has a lot of chlorine. Um, not a dimension, but it... Uh, you know, the oxygen in water will uh, promote rust as well. So um, anyway, uh, that's what I'm doing here is I'm just cleaning these all off just real quick with uh, coating them with a little bit of WD-40 um, to make sure that uh, uh, we don't have any kind of corrosion problems while I'm working along here. And then when, once I get all these valves out, um, there's still a little bit, little bits of water like in here in the spark plugs and whatnot. I'll just take some WD-40 and I'll wash all that out as well. Um, it will be all cleaned up when we get it done, but this is just a prevention to keep any kind of rust from developing while we're going from one step to the next. All right, so as soon as I get all this together, we'll uh, relap uh, cylinders number one and three, and, uh, and then we'll do a test again. All right, we got all the ports all sealed up and everything is past its tests. 
let's go ahead and start installing some valves. So the trick with this is you, um, you have to have the valves to seat um, so that when you install them from the top side, um, uh, they don't slide back down when you're doing it, right? So um, what I got here is I've made a, um, made a little plug that will go over the top of this. So when I, I put the valves in, I'll be able to tape this on there and then flip it over and then I'll work from work on the top and you don't have to worry about anything shifting around. Um, so the first thing you need to do when you put your valves in is uh, we've already cleaned these twice now. Um, the in, the, uh, the valve guides, these are um, magnesium alloy um, valve guides. Um, and uh, so we've already cleaned them twice. The first thing we have to do is we need to, um, we need to lubricate these shafts. Um, these valves are going to be running for a while before any any oil gets down into them, and uh, frankly, there's not like an oiler. There's it, it, it kind of the oil that gets in there is kind of consequential, um, and so um, let's go ahead and, and throw some assembly lube on there and to get these uh, the valves going on number one. All right, don't need a whole lot because there's really tight tile up tolerance in here. Um, all right, there goes the intake. Let's get this. Lubricated. There goes the exhaust. All right. Now, we'll put our little plug in here. Oops. How's it go? There we go. <laughs> A little bit of tape. Enough to keep that in there when we flip it over. I'll flip this sucker over. Alrighty. Alright, so um, the original design for the MG uh, um, valve guide seals, there's a seal that would normally go on here, just a little o-ring that kind of floats. Um, and over the years they've replaced that with these. These have uh, a little spring that goes on and it will clamp it into the edge here and it has a, a little more positive seal um, and so you just want to slide those babies on and they will just connect right over the top of that valve guide just like that now I've seen a couple of forums where they talk about the exhaust valve seals um, the uh, the intake valves um, they, they have a vacuum they draw a vacuum so Having the valve seal on there will keep any kind of oil from passing this direction. On the exhaust valves, they don't have a vacuum. They have pressure. They have positive pressure. So the, anything that would get past this, the valve seals would be going in this direction. Um, and so what some people say in some of the forums is to put the new uh, valve seals on the intakes and leave the old O-rings on, uh, on the exhaust valves. Well, I don't have the old O-rings, and the, uh, the original had all the valve seals just like this on all of them so that's what i'm going to i'm going to go with that um, and so we're going to put these positive valve seals on both the the intake and the exhaust so um next thing we need to do on this is we need to compress some springs the um, the methodology here is you have a spring retainer that goes down oops well maybe i should have put that on first so let's get the order right. These babies go on, on right there. And then you put your valve seal on. All right. So then the next thing you're going to do is you're going to put the spring on like this. And then we're going to put uh, the valve keys. They slide in on either direction. Um, and they, they hold this retaining pin so that the spring is under tension, right? Um, and so there's this, uh, this tool that's made specially for that. Um, 
And uh, basically, what you're going to do on this is you're going to you're going to put this um, retaining ring into the slot like that, and then we're going to we're going to grab the spring. See how it has two different locations? We're going to grab the spring. Hang on. Okay, there we go. Um, and then start tightening it, right? So as this tightens, it'll start to contract that spring. And that will make it shorter. I'm going to go ahead and hover over this as we go. So we can see how far it, it has to go. The, uh, the pins that go in are ba they basically make a circle. I don't know if you can see how that works. And they go around and then they, the inside of the pin, this edge, will grab the top edge of the, uh, the valve like that. And then when the spring comes back up, it holds them together and that becomes a retaining pin. Okay, so let's go ahead and, and compress the spring. if I can, you can see how it's getting closer right here. Getting there. All right, see how the spring is compressing right in there? So now we can start thinking about putting these pins in. Okay, that one fits in. This pin right here needs us to move just a little bit further with the spring. Need to coax it in there. Just a little further. Okay, so you can see both of them are nice and loose in there and they're sitting in their little spot. Now as I release this, let me see if I can get my hand in the right position. <laughs> as I release this, uh, you'll be able to see this pin coming up and grabbing those and they will come together and bite the end of that valve. There you go. You can see how that's nice and tight right there. And that is how you install a valve. So just rinse and repeat eight more or seven more times and you'll be good to go. See how that comes all the way around like that? Everything's nice and seated and everything's square and hunky dory. All right. I will continue from here and then we'll speed up the video.
Okay, so there you have it. All of the valves have been installed. Uh, next thing going on is uh, this is going to go on to the uh, onto the engine, and we'll uh, we'll do the uh, um, the head gasket install, um, and we'll pick it up from there. All right. So first thing we're going to need to do to get ready to put the head on is uh, we're going to clean that surface just to make sure that. Uh, you know, we had some tape on it to protect it earlier um, and it's been sitting for a while So I want to make sure that nothing Nothing on here is any kind of contamination or anything like that and that nothing fell in here to get in any of the pistons or anything So um, we're gonna take a little bit of time. Look, there's a little bit of a little bit of flash over rust here We're gonna take a little bit of time and uh, we're gonna clean this off and make it nice and nice and ready to be seated upon so that's the first thing that we're going to do. All right, so that's nice and clean. I've got it all, all the gum from all the tape and when I was trying to protect it off of there. I've got any kind of topical rust, any kind of blemishes or any kind of dirt in there. It's all been cleaned off. I also went inside and cleaned out the pistons to make sure that there's no, uh, no uh, debris in here. There's no dust or anything that is collected over the time while it was sitting up here. Everything's nice and clean um, and ready to go. So, uh, first things first, we're going to put the, uh, uh, the head bolts in. Uh, we bought a, uh, a stud kit here. This is available on Moss. Um, and um, this stud kit has uh, everything that you need to make it work. These are really nice studs, too. They have, uh, if you can see, they have a, uh, uh, a hex um, in the top, so it's really easy for you to put them in there. Um, these studs have uh, a a fine thread at one end and a coarse thread at the other end. All right, let's uh, let's go ahead and stack these uh, the four large ones in the, the the four large ones in place. First thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to put a little thread locker in there. I got some um, uh, Loctite. What what type is this? This is um, Red Two Seventy One. I don't know if you can. Here we go. Just putting a little tiny bit on here. I don't want to make a mess with it. All right, let's throw these babies in there. So we got a bunch more to put in here. One, two, three, four, four. Try this again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven more. That's what I've got. So the numbers check out. Just a little dab will do you. Okay, there's not like a torque setting or anything on that. Uh, we're just trying to get them snug uh, so that when we do put a torque on the tops, there's no uh, there's no play one way or the other to uh, to loosen it once you get that right number. I'm just going to go ahead and clean up some of this. If there's any excess here and there. Didn't really use a lot, so there shouldn't be too much to clean up. Excellent. Moving on. All right, so here's the head gasket that I'm putting on today. This is uh, also from Moss Motors. Cylinder head gasket, you see right there. Um, and uh, 
it is a composite. So it has a chrome and a, um, and a uh, sort of a cloth material with a poly, uh, poly impregnated cloth material. All right, so let's go ahead and get this thing up. All right, placement on these is pretty self-explanatory. I mean, you can see the holes here match up with the holes uh, where the, uh, the push rods go. Um, and then all the rest of the holes match up pretty much um, where um, either there's an oiler, this is the oil hole, or there's a, there's a water jacket where these other ones are. These are all water jackets. Um, so uh, that's pretty straightforward. Slide this baby in place. Then uh, officially installed the head gasket. All right. So before I put the uh, uh, the the head on, uh, the the next thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna um, I'm gonna go ahead and advance the uh, cylinders so that I have uh, cylinder number one in uh, top dead center and um, it's in the compression stroke which means that neither of the valves are going to be open and you can check that by touching the tappets right here so I'm going to go ahead and um, advance that and th that'll actually save us a little bit of time later on <clears throat> when we're um, uh, adjusting the valves we'll know exactly where we're at uh, in the system. Well, that was easy. <laughs> uh, okay, so I got cylinder one uh, at the top and both of the tappets are on the bottom. So this should put me at uh, top dead center on the compression stroke for cylinder number one. Uh, just doing a quick inspection real quick, make sure everything is clean. There's nothing in here. We're all golden. All right, let's drop the head in there. All right, not exactly light, but you can see down the hole, once you get one in there, you'll be good to go. All right, the head is in place. What a pretty sight. Okay, so um, these head bolts um, are also involved in uh, securing the, the rocker arms. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going we're to complete the valve train by installing the uh, push rods and then the rocker arms. Let's take these old bolts off. All right. Let me go get my push rods. All right, so here's a quick little tip. Um, when you're looking at your push rods, uh, the most important thing with a push rod is that it is straight and true. Here is a straight and true push rod. See, what I got here is um, just a little box, and all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna roll this, and you can see how a straight one just kind of rolls without any kind of deviation. Well, we found a couple of these to be a little bit distorted. Now you, you can look at it, it doesn't look bent. It's not like it's like a skew, but watch this. 
Can you see that? How it goes whoop, whoop, whoop. That is a bent push rod. And this one here is a little bit suspect. It wants to stop and turn back. Not near as bad as that other one. This one here has got something going on, so this one's also suspect. Luckily, I have some spares from a prior project. We'll see if I can get a total of eight um, out of the bunch. Moving on. All right, so we got the... Uh, the push rods all sorted out. What ended up happening was I uh, just went and bought a brand new set. So, bada bing, bada bang. All right, so just drop those in there. Make sure that they match up with their... Uh, I've already put assembly oil in the bottom of the tappets. So we just want to make sure that they all go in there and seat properly. See them going in right there. Again, brand new valves, brand new push rods, so you don't have to worry about matching which one's which. But um, if you're replacing uh, or uh, rebuilding and you're using, um, make sure you keep track of uh, which ones go where. Okay, all, all handled. All right, so since the uh, um, since the head is uh, the head bolts go through these these top these uh, uh, this portion of the rocker arms. You have to put the rocker arm on before you torque the head on. So that's the next step here. It can be a little tricky to get these to all line up right. Um, already got assembly oil all over this thing. You can see it's like spider webs right now. It's kind of cold out here today. Um, so you just need to make sure that all of these push rods made up with uh, their little ball and hole here. Get them all to line up. There we go. There we go. Kind of get things to touch right. Now there's going to be um, at least one pushing up, and uh, you know this is this is going to be. Uh, under pressure when it's when it's tightened up. So you'll see a little bit of a gap here. You don't have to worry about that. All you need to do is make sure that all of these push rods are mated with their little ball joints. If you have one off like that and you start to tighten it, it could uh, uh, make you have to torque the head twice, which that would be an inconvenience. Um, so there you go. All right. Everybody's playing nice. Okay. All right, so for this next step here, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start uh, lubricating all of the threads. Uh, the thread lubricant that I'm using before we put the torque on is this uh, ARP Ultra Torque uh, Fastener Assembly Lubricant. Um, when you're putting torque on, um, you know, anything that has a torque spec, you wanna make sure that the, you don't have any kind of uh, resistance that will create a false torque reading. Uh, and that's really what this lubricant's about, is to make sure that you get it down as tight as it needs to be and engage all those threads. So I'm going to go ahead and start lubricating these. Anything that needs torque.
All right, so for the uh, for the head studs, each one gets one of these neat little washers. These are uh, pretty hefty washers, but they come with the kit. These four that go in the middle have their own little washers, but the last one over here has a uh, uh, a special clip that goes on here. I made, I was missing one, so I fabricated that, but it keeps this uh, retaining pin, which screws it in and holds the shaft steady, keeps that from uh, coming undone. So that goes on top, or that goes in first, and then the, the washer goes on top of that. All right, let's start throwing these nuts on. I'm just gonna hand tighten these. Very careful around the open hole. It makes me so nervous. Uh, just so you can see, these are uh, these are nice uh, twelve point nuts. You see that? Am I focused? Twelve point nut. If uh, if you don't have a wrench for this, don't replace it with something else. Use these. These are hardened. These are made special for the head. Go ahead and buy yourself a new tool um, and uh, use these 12 point nuts. So just a good example of a uh, 12 point socket. I'm gonna go ahead and use my uh, speed wrench and just lightly tighten these down. I'm not going by any torque pattern. I'm just bringing it down hand tight. Okay, so before we begin to consider torquing these down, we want to confirm that all of these um, these uh, ball joints are engaged with the tie rods. Going through every single one. Oh, probably got my head in the way. <laughs> so basically, I'm just checking to make sure that all these all these joints are met, are married up. Everything's happy and connected. All right. All right, so let's move on to torque. All right, this is a little bit better vantage point where you can see um, the head bolts that we're going to torque. Um, just so you can get an idea of what the pattern looks like. The uh, uh, on this side, there's a an odd number. So it's easy to find the center. So you have one, two, three, four, five, right? So it's easy to find the center. This one is going to be number one. And um, from here, you can visualize a triangle, right? So it'll be one, two, three. That makes a triangle, right? One, two, three. And then you want to continue in a spiral. Four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11. So there's 11 bolts. Again, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. All right, so that's the pattern that we're going to use on this to, uh, to torque these. Uh, the torque setting is at 50 pounds per square inch. That's 
Uh, if I can get this in here so you can see it. See, I got the 50 right there. I don't know if you can see that, but it's set to 50. Uh, and we're going to start with number one here. There we go, all torqued up. Now we're going to throw some torque on these um, and then we'll start to uh, work on adjusting these, these valves. So, let me check back when we get to there. Alright, so we're going to adjust these valves. Um, the uh, um, you probably heard a number of times um, with these valve adjustments as a rule of nine. Um, I'm going to do it from this side so you can see the adjusters better. <clears throat> so the, what the rule of nine goes is you have eight valves. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And with the rule of nine, when um, this, the, everything has to add up to nine, right? So if you're going to adjust the... Um, number one valve, then you need to do it when the number eight valve is compressed. So um, it, all you want to know is when you make the adjustments is that the valve is seated, it's closed. So when number eight is open, then number one will be open or will be closed because that's the rule of nine. It has to add up to nine. So likewise with number two, number seven will be will be compressed and, and blah, blah, blah. So. That's how that's going to work. Now, when we first started this off, um, if you recall, early on, earlier in the video, I said that I'm going to set cylinder number one to top dead center in the compression stroke. So that means that we know that this first valve is closed. Um, so I can adjust this one. That would mean that, um, you know, all we have to do now is, is you know, once we adjust this one, is rotate the engine until... We see number eight open up and then number one will be compressed, will be opened. Once number one opens, then we can adjust number eight. So you can do it back and forth. Um, either uh, with either valve is open or closed, you can adjust the other as long as, as, long as it's um, in a closed state uh, so that you can adjust it. Now, all of these are out of, completely out of adjustment. And the reason why is because we, we backed them all off and, um, and so they're Right now, I doubt any of them would, would close at all. So um, we can't rely on any of them to be in open or closed state, but that's why when we first set it up, we put um, cylinder number one, top dead center, in the compression stroke. So that's the plan, Stan. Uh, let's get started with these. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and adjust this one. You see we have uh, a feeler gauge here, and I've pulled out the, uh, um, the uh, 0 0.15 uh, um, inches um, and all we need to do is adjust this slide this in between the valve and if we can get this to, to, to 0 0.15 and you can just tighten and loosen this screw until you feel that that adjustment and you'll be good so um, once you get that then you just take your trusty half inch wrench and tighten that baby down and then take a quick adjustment again make sure that it didn't adjust when uh, when you tightened it I think we're okay here uh, 
bring it back up a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and move forward on these and, and uh, we'll speed up the video as we go. Just make sure we got this nice and tight. Okay. And there you go. All the valves are are, uh, are set up. Huh. So that is installing a head and the uh, the top end of the engine on a 1977 MGB. Um, you can see uh, during this video we went over um, how to how to put the valves in, how to compress the springs, how to lap the valves. We put new tappets in, we put new push rods in, uh, we've installed a new head gasket, torqued the head on, and adjusted the valves for initial running of the engine. Um, after you run the engine for about 50, uh, 50 miles or so, you're going to want to uh, retorque the heads and, and readjust the valves. Um, it's kind of a break-in period. So um, when you when you put the, the valve cover gasket on for the first time, uh, you're not going to want to use all kind of sealer and everything because um, you're going to want to take it off again. So uh, after you've you've done your break-in, then you can you can do the permanent install on the on the valve cover. So that's all we're going to cover today for this video. Uh, hopefully this was very helpful. If you have any comments or suggestions on anything that we did, please do contribute. Um, I'm not an expert at this. I'm just uh, sharing my experience, and uh, uh, this is my very first MG to work on. So there's certainly a lot of uh, little idiosyncrasies and little tricks and, and tricks of the trade that I'm sure a lot of folks um, can really benefit from. So if you know any of those, please do share, comment, and uh, subscribe. Uh, helping to me to subscribe will help the the channel to grow uh, and uh, get it in front of more people on YouTube. So there you go. Have a good day. Cheers.